Goody will drive. Left hand and flush over the top of Kepnang. Pull back, step back, three. Bottom! Mavericks, it's short. Tip back in. Weaver got it. Yes! Neely, the handoff. Jones for the tie. Oh, no. oh he's down! And one! Presents itself with what you got to take. You can't. It's knocked away. Still loose. Doherty the heave. Oh, oh my God! Welcome to the Straight Out of Whack podcast. And I keep watching those those clips from the WAC tournament last year. Shreda Daughtry's prayer that she threw up and it went in and it was answered. Tevin Jones with the four-point play to give Southern Utah that one-point win over Utah Valley in the WAC semifinals. Man, we are uh, exactly, uh, I want to say, seven, say about 30 days away. A little less than, a little over 30 days away. 31 to be exact because it starts on March 13th. But uh Whack Vegas is upon us at the Orleans Arena, and I am looking forward to it. Super excited. I'm going to turn down my little speaker here so I don't sound so loud. But yeah, March 13th, Whack Tournament, Orleans Arena. Tickets for, you can get all session tickets. So that means you have to buy it for all 14 games. Uh, right now are on sale. I believe it's at the Orleans Ticket Office. Um, yes, Orleans ticket office at or yeah, uh, there's a link here. Um, I will put it in the description below as well. Um, but it's on the Orleans Arena Twitter handle, and like I said, I'll put it on in the description below so you can check it out. Anyways, that's exciting. March 13th, crazy. And here's the good news: three teams have already clinched their spots at Wack Vegas, so their fans can start making plans. And it's Pretty much a foregone conclusion that both the GCU teams were going to make it to Wack Vegas. They have both clinched. And then the California Baptist women's team has also clinched its spot. So three spots are gone. That means that there are 13 spots left to clinch over the next three, four weeks as we get down to the WAC tournament, 2024 WAC tournament in Las Vegas. <clears throat> With that being said, what are your thoughts about the tournament? It's a ladder, it's a ladder bracket. So that means that the top two seeds will get buys to the semifinals on Friday. The three, four seeds get buys to the quarterfinals on Thursday. And we'll have men's and women's games every day of the week from Wednesday until Saturday. Now, the championship game is a little different. The women's game is at 10:30 a.m. Pacific, you know, Vegas time because it'll be on ESPN U, I want to say, if I remember right, uh, nationally broadcast game. So that's awesome. That's great that they get that game on national television. I'm so excited for that. Um, I just want to make sure of what channel that will be on again. Yeah. So let's see. It'll be the women's game will be on ESPNU at 10:30 a.m. Pacific time on Saturday, March 16th. Excuse me. And then the second WAC men's semifinal, which will be the two seed um, pitted against whoever wins and gets through to that game, will be on ESPNU or ESPN two at 8:30 p.m. Pacific time. On Friday night, Friday, March 15th, and then the men's championship game is on ESPN2 at 8.30 p.m. Pacific time on Saturday, March 16th. So big gap in between the championship games. It is what it is. We're excited. WAC tournament's here, and uh, it's going to be a barn burner. There's some good teams. I think on the women's side, it's a little bit more open than it is on the men's side. I think GCU should win the WAC tournament. And I'll stick with that all the way through. I know there may be a podcast that I get on over the next couple of weeks where they ask me to predict who I'm, who's going to win the WAC tournament. GC will be my pick. I'm going to stick with it. <clears throat> They've been playing better basketball. They smoked Utah Valley in the second half lat, two Saturdays ago. This past Saturday, they smoked Southern Utah by 25 at home. So they have two home games this week with Utah Tech and California Baptist. And if they win those two games and – get some help from UT Arlington with an upset, you know, with a win over Tarleton. GC will clinch the one seed automatically. Like it's just, it's a foregone conclusion. The the points are just too extreme. I did the math 
And now I got to find my sheet here. I did it on a little drawing that my son, you know, put together a while back. Um, so this is where it would be. If uh, GCU were to win these next two games in the, the resume seating system, they would uh, and then lose every game after that, even if they lose to Tarleton on the 22nd, they would still have 5.52 points. If Tarleton were to lose to UT Arlington and then went out, Tarleton would have 5.47 points. So Tarleton's the only team that can catch GCU, potentially, but it would take an epic collapse by GCU over the final seven games and a, a Texan run of seven straight wins to go on to their five straight wins that they already have. So they would have to win 12 straight games to end the regular season and hope they get some help from teams around the WAC to beat GCU twice, maybe three times. That probably won't happen. Um, I'm pretty sure that GCU is going to lock up the one seed either this week or next week. Um, it, it, it's just, the lead's just too big, right? And it's not like the, the, the Lopes are going to go lose seven games. Two wins or Talton loss or three wins and call it a day, right? And like I said, they get Utah Tech at home this week on Thursday. They get CBU at home on Saturday. Tarleton goes to UT Arlington before having a week off to prep to host GCU on the 22nd. And if GCU wins all three games, one seed locked up, no brainer. Either way, the GCU men and most likely the GCU women are going to be playing on Friday. I want to take a look at this. I'm going to show you this resume seating for the women. So we can break this down here. I'm going to put it on the screen here in just a second once I get it pulled up. I will share my screen now with you. Got to pull it up here. All right. Let's take a look at it here. So California Baptist leads the Lopes in the resume seating system right now. CBU playing really good basketball. Chloe Webb. Probably the player of the year. She had a 32-point performance against UT Arlington on Thursday in that epic win, 94-92, over the Lady Mavs at College Park Center. Then she had 22 points in their win over Utah Tech the other night. Um, and they've won a bunch of games without Chloe Lemon, who they hope to get back this week when they play Grand Canyon, when they host Grand Canyon on Saturday, February 17th at the Fowler Event Center. So that'll be big. Grand Canyon, number two. Obviously, you can see the significant lead that the Lancers and the Lopes have for that one-two seed. Remember, they get a bye to the semifinals. Now, I don't know if that's good or bad because teams will have played a game, will have a game under their belt. You don't get to work out or practice at, the, at Orleans Arena prior to your ball game. So... There may be a little shoot around that you get, but that's about it. A quick practice. Anyways, so we'll see who the one seed is. Saturday will have a significant impact on that, I guess you could say, um, as both the Lancers and the Lopes are trying to vie for those top two seeds. SFA, again, you know, California Baptist has eight games left. Grand Canyon has seven games left. SFA would probably have to win out and then get some help to be in that one-two conversation, but I don't know that that's going to happen. Um, luckily, you know, for SFA's sake, GCU and California Baptist play each other twice down the stretch here. The thing is, if you look at the points, here we got California Baptist. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this. But California Baptist is at Utah Valley on Thursday. I'm hoping to go to that game so I can see the Lancers in person, <clears throat> see Jared Olson's crew in person. But CBU will get 0.38 points for a win over Utah Valley. They'll lose 0.62 points if they lose in Orem. Then if they beat Grand Canyon, they'll get 0.55 points or they'll lose 0.45 points. 
Now, if you look at Grand Canyon, they'll get 0.55 points if they beat Utah Tech on the road on Thursday. And then they'll get 0.65 points if they beat CBU on the road on Saturday. So GCU, the women, you know, depending on what they do this week, they could potentially clinch one of the top two spots. Same with same with CBU. If CBU wins both these games this week, they're going to clinch that spot, right? I mean, they could lose a lot at Tarleton. I don't know that they're going to lose at home to Tarleton. That ACU game looms large because ACU already beat CBU back um, back in January, right here, January 13th. So, uh, but it'll be interesting without Aspen Thornton how AC responds. And then, you know, we got the big one, probably for the regular season title right here between California Baptist and Grand Canyon in Phoenix on March 9th to end the regular season. So I just don't know that SFA can catch them. Um, Let's look here. You know, they'll get 0.51 if they beat ACU at ACU on Thursday. Uh, No, that's Saturday. Excuse me. They... SFA has a week off before they host, before they go to ACU. Won't get a lot of points for beating Seattle U at home. Won't get a lot of points for beating Utah Valley at home. Uh, these two games with it, but they get Cal Baptist and Grand Canyon. I mean, that's, let's look at this here. So 0.51, 0.63, 0.83, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. Is that right? Let's see. 0. 0.63, 0. 0.83, 1.27, um, 1.72. Nope, 1.82. Excuse me, 1.82. 1. No, 2.18 and 2.18. Seven one. So even if SFA were to win out two point seven one, there's still they'd be at three point. Yeah, so they need a little bit of help here. They would be at three point three point four five here. So they would need CBU to lose quite a bit of games. Okay, like CBU. Would lose, let's see, um, that's 0. 0.65, so there's 1.07, 1. 1.37, 1. no, excuse me, 1.77. So I, I, I'm going to say they won't catch them because CBU has one, two, three, four winnable games left. Um, yeah, I just don't see them catch them. So I'm not going to go out on a limb and say it's confirmed that CBU and GC are going to be the one, two seeds on the women's side. It, it's looking pretty significant that that's going to happen, but there's still a chance that some kind of epic collapse could happen. I mean, who knows? This this season's been crazy as it is. We'll look at the men's here real quick. Look over here on the men's side, the WAC seating system. Jalen Searles looks like he got the WAC player of the week, Utah Tech guard. Obviously, Grand Canyon has this two two game lead right now for the regular season title. Resume seating system five point seven zero lead point lead. Basically, one maybe two wins and it's over. That they have seven to play. And considering you only get one point, it's it's the points are derived from one whole point for each game, two wins. That goes over eight. It, it's pretty much done deal. Because they're not going to lose five full points if they were to lose the final five games of the regular season, which they're not going to do. So Let's just call it now Grand Canyon. We've already called it really basically that they're going to be the one seed at the WAC tournament. Uh, now it's just a matter who's going to be the two seed. Tarleton right there in a, in a good spot. 
But Tarleton has a tough stretch the rest of the way. Um, we'll look at their schedule real quick here. Tarleton is at UT Arlington on Thursday. Then they host Grand Canyon on the 22nd, host California Baptist on the 24th. They're at Utah Tech, at Southern Utah. They finish with Utah Valley and Seattle, which... Ooh, it's so hard to say. The way that Tarleton's playing, they should be the two seed. But, man, that's a tough stretch. UT Arlington, Grand Canyon, Cal Baptist, Utah Tech, Southern Utah, who Tarleton lost to Southern Utah at Wisdom Gym. Um, so, and Utah Tech plays great at Burns Arena. You saw that this week, right? They beat Southern Utah and they beat CBU. They held, they had GCU on the rocks. They beat Utah Valley there. They beat Seattle there. Like, um, I believe they beat Seattle there. I need to double check that guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Utah Tech, where are they at? They haven't played in St. George yet. They play this week in St. George on Saturday. So we'll see what happens there. But anyways, that's kind of where we're at. I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. We'll remove it. But we are in middle of February. That means WAC Vegas is, what is that? One, two, three, four weeks away. I am so pumped. It was so good last year. There were so many good ball games. There were upsets. There were crazy finishes. Uh, I remember, you know, the the Sam Houston ACU women's game that tipped us off for the weekend. You know, Sam Houston, I think, scored like 12 points in the final minute and a half to win the ball game. And, you know, then we had Shrika da Daughtry's, you know, prayer. We had Tevin Jones with the prayer. We had uh, Utah Tech, both their men and their women, getting their first ever WAC tournament wins. Carlton men got their first ever WAC tournament win. Um, you know, Seattle U upset UT Arlington, like in the women's side. And I mean, it's just one of those things, you know, GCU men went on that terror, obviously. And Southern Utah went to their first ever NCAA tournament. Like that's what we live for in this. What's going to be interesting is when we get down in the next week or two, probably two weeks, two and a half weeks, when teams may be out of contention for WAC Vegas, what is going to happen there? Are they going to fold? Are they going to play spoiler? Are they going to, you know, that, that's going to be an interesting thing to watch. What are teams going to do, especially ones that have to go on the road to play ball games? When they're really not meaningful to that program, are they really going to go? Will there be a punishment if they don't go? Like that, it's going to be very interesting to see I don't know what's going to happen, but, you know, the crazy thing is we're going to be talking about who gets in more than we're going to be talking about who is at the top of the league right now because that race is more intriguing, right? Because we already know that the top two teams on the women's side are in. We already know that GCU is in. Um, if we're looking at the WAC standings for the men, uh. Let's look. Tarleton is at 10 and 3. They got what is that? 13, seven games left. And they need one win to actually they need two wins. So they'll give them 12 and 3 with five to play. Need two wins. And either in a Southern Utah loss, basically. Um, yeah, so Tarleton needs two wins. CBU, SFA, they, CBU's played 12 games, SFA's played 13. So CBU still has eight games left. So somebody could still catch them, be, you know, from those Southern Utah's four and nine, Abilene Christians three and nine, UTRGV's two and 10. UTRGV's kind of on the brink of getting eliminated right now. Um, they played 12 games, they have eight left. Hmm. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what plays out. Utah Valley, Utah Tech, Seattle U, UT Arlington, SFA, California Baptist, Charleston State, Grand Canyon are all in right now on the men's side. 
on the women's side, Grand Canyon, California Baptist, Stephen F. Austin, Utah Tech, UT Arlington, Abilene Christian, UT RGV. That's interesting. They're at four and eight. They're ahead by percentage points over Tarleton and Southern Utah, who are both four and nine. Um, Southern Utah beat UTRGV. They have to play their second game later on. Um, Tarleton split with UTRGV, but Tarleton also uh, l- beat Southern Utah in Cedar City. So that tiebreaker is going to be very interesting because remember, if the head to heads are split, you know, one on one. It comes down to the resume seating system. So whoever's rated higher in the seating system, which right now, out of those three teams, Southern Utah is ranked higher in the seating system than both Tarleton and UTRGV. Not by much, by, let's see, in Tarleton's case, it's 0.59 points. And in UTRGV's points, it's 0.61 points. So there's room to make up there. But could you imagine a three-way tie in the regular regular season standings comes down to the seating system to determine who gets in and gets in that final that final spot for the WAC tournament? Just crazy, man. It's very, very crazy. Um, you know, I wrote about it on the Substack today, but we're going to talk about this too. The Coach of the Year Award. I had somebody ask me today after they saw the post, if UT Arlington's KT Turner has any shot at the coach of the year. My, my answer to him, my good friend Isaac, who is awesome, he covers UT Arlington basketball, he's awesome with it. <clears throat> um, I told him I think it's a two-man race between Bryce Drew and Joseph Jones right now. Tarleton's acting head coach, Joseph Jones. Um. The only way that I think KT Turner gets in is if there's either an epic collapse by both GCU and Tarleton or UT Arlington wins out and gets in the two seed. That, that's when it's possible. But if GCU finishes the season 29-2, and two, it's hard to argue against Bryce Drew winning Coach of the Year. Yeah, they were predicted to win, and I mentioned that in a tweet the other day. And they have the resources that a lot of other schools in the WAC don't have. So it shouldn't come as a surprise if they win, or if Bryce Drew wins and they win out. If Tarleton were to win out, if they were to upset GCU next week at Wisdom Gym, Tarleton wins out and GCU wins out, I still think Bryce Drew wins it. But I think Joseph Jones, that race is closer than what people think because what he's done as the acting head coach is amazing. Like, he came in in November. He was the assistant head coach, took over for Billy Gillespie, who was dealing with a medical circumstance. And um, he basically ran with it. They're 15-5 and five since he took over. They've won five straight. They just went to Seattle and um, – Utah Valley and won there. They're 17 and 7 overall, 10 and 3 in whack play. They won the SoCal Challenge. Yeah, I mean, and they won five in a row, just like GCU, who's won five in a row. So, I mean, he has fewer resources, NIL money, all this other stuff. And, you know, they're still, they're in the final year of their transition. So, man, I, 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 Kudos, right? Like, this is a two-man race right now, if we're being honest. What KT Turner's done with UT Arlington, and, you know, they're at 12 wins right now overall. They have their 7-6 and in WAC play. Like, it's a, it's a great turnaround, you know, and maybe if he had had Philip Russell the entire season, might be different. But Joseph Jones, I mean, where they were picked to finish in, in the WAC by most outlets, like, the, the – He's got to be considered, right? I think Bryce Drew ultimately wins it, but I think Joseph Jones, it's a two-man race. Uh, one last thing here before I finish up. This bracketology is kind of interesting. Um, I saw one today, and I posted about it. It's really weird. 
GCU is 22 and 2. And in this one bracket, tells we have projection sports. They are picked as a 12 seed going up against five seed San Diego State. Now, it wouldn't bother me that much if it was against a team that Grand Canyon probably hadn't played this year and hadn't beat, but they beat San Diego State back in December. Why is why is San Diego State ahead of them? I mean, I get the analytics, the net, the this, the quad one, all this other stuff. I get it. But GCU has done everything that you've asked it to do. They're 22 and 2. Their lone loss was to a South Carolina team that is a five seed in the NCAA tournament. And it's by a point on a neutral floor. And then they lost at Seattle U, where a lot of teams lose. That happens. They beat everybody else. Beat San Diego State. Beat San Francisco. Beat Liberty. Beat Louisiana Tech. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. Now they have to start winning like they did on Saturday, where they won by 25 points against Southern Utah to maybe increase you know, that net and so forth. But it just doesn't make sense, guys. Like This is a 22-2 and two team that's really, really good. You know, people say, I hate GCU. I don't hate GCU. I don't have a hatred towards them or bias against them. For GCU fans that are listening, I don't have a bias against your team. I will stick up for them where they need to be stuck up for. And seeding for the, for the NCAA tournament, if GCU wins out and is 31-2, and two, having them on the 11 or 12 line is wrong, period. End of story. I would say the same thing about that 30-win New Mexico State team a couple years ago back in 2019. Um, like, it's just wrong. I know there's not a lot of respect for mid-majors, but GCU's done everything that you've asked them to. If this was Gonzaga, even though the, the WCC is not significantly better than the WAC, you'd have them on the two-line. So, you know, let's, let's call a spade a spade here. GCU deserves more respect than they're getting. That's how I'll end this podcast episode. Everybody, uh, I'm going to play one clip before I end it, actually, uh, just to remind you. So um, pay attention, and then we'll be right back. Whack Vegas is back. The best fans, championship basketball, all in exciting Las Vegas. Join us March 13th through the 16th at the Orleans Arena for the 2024 Hercules Tires Whack Basketball Tournament. Don't miss the crowning of a men's and women's champion. For more information, go to waxsports.com slash waxvegas. Yep, everybody remember that, waxsports.com slash waxvegas. Check out those all-session tickets. Uh, General Mission right now are on sale. I'm not sure when the single game tickets go on sale, but uh, be on the lookout. We'll let you know when we get those. Anyways, everybody. Have a great rest of your Monday, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode of the Straight Out Whack Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Straight Out Whack Podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcasting platforms. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Remember to follow Whack Hoops Nation on all your favorite social media platforms.